Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissHandLog.com. All right, today what I want to show you is an instrument that I just received, and they've kind of been a new friend of the channel. This IT Tech, where I got this power supply here. Uh, yeah, they uh, offered to send me another instrument, and look at that, pretty darn cool. Well, what is it? It's a high quality instrument, of course. Uh, IT Tech Electronics, and uh, you know their stuff does look like it's, you know, good quality, and uh, for the price, it's it's great. So this thing here is not a power supply. Let's open the box, take a look. All right, we got a power cord. It's IEC. For United States, that's awesome. Good start. The other thing came in this: a certificate of calibration. You know, like I say, you don't always get these these days. So uh, often you have to pay for them now, especially the big brand companies. So it's really nice that you start off with a calibrated piece of equipment. That's nice. All right, let's see. There we go. And you know, the other thing I know, you know, they, they do uh, package your equipment nicely too. Uh, I think this was in another box I took it out of. I can't remember for sure. The power supply wasn't a double box. Pretty sure this one was too. But I actually got it a couple weeks ago. Uh, and since then I hit my head skiing. <laughs> so, no, that's not it. I just, I, I think I do remember. But you know what? anti-static bag that's another nice touch and it had a zip lock and the desk uh, package fell out keep it dry so all good touches and that's recyclable by the way but okay so electronic load or active load uh, I, I always call them but now you know everybody calls them electronic loads which is what they are I guess but right off the bat uh, first of all, it's got some weight to it. This is a nice unit. Um, now, another thing, I noticed that they did this on the power supply. They put a little sticker here saying set to 110 volts. Because there's a little switch here in case you're in the other, you know, somewhere where there's 220. So it is already set for 110, but they have a thing here that's kind of a double protection. So I think that's a good touch. Now, what I noticed back here, there's. Uh, a B and C for a monitor so it looks like I could hook up a monitor there's a com it says TTL that's transistor logic so you know 5 volt stuff probably and then there's an iSense and a trigger connector and I think this is the mating connector that you unplugs boy that is a tight connection but yeah that's the mating connector I'll, I'll bring the camera over show you guys close up of all this but uh, wow it talks about the fuse what kind of fuse there is because when you take this off there's a fuse right here so like I said I bring the camera over warning no internal operator serviceable parts serviced by qualified personnel only I think that's me right <laughs> uh, alright the bottom uh, it's got some nice rubber feet and some little plastic guys that hold the thing stands up maybe three quarters of an inch I'm guessing there's an uh, iTech warranty void if removed we'll end up voiding that pretty soon but uh, yeah it's kind of designed like old fashioned HP stuff if you or the fluke equipment you know what I mean where you pull the handle to remove handle rotate to vertical and pull outward so I guess you could totally remove the handle too so all right anyway you can tuck it down underneath here so it's out of your way you can use it to prop it up which is how I often would use it if it's on a bench so you can see it easily and by the way in case I didn't mention or didn't make it clear this was provided for free uh, to review and so on now I'll just tell you what the specs are it's uh, right here says uh, I like when they put it right there it says 150 volts so you can do loads up to 150 volts 30 amps that's really nice 
Uh, that's why it's kind of heavy. Um, and 300 watts. Alright, so what that means is if you're at 30 amps, you can only do voltages up to 10 volts. So, uh, you can't do more than 300 watts. You can do the maximum of 30 amps or the maximum of 150 volts, but 300 watts. So if you're 150 volts, 2 amps, right? That'd be 300 watts. So, yeah, that's kind of uh, the way these things work. And, uh, you know what? Let's bring the camera over and take this for a spin. And we're going to take a look inside, too. All right, guys, this is the certificate of calibration that comes with it. And this is, uh, you know, I guess you use this to help find the manual. But anyway, yeah, that's your certificate. I'll just keep it in the bag. That's, that's all that's in there. And the power cord. And the thing about the power cord is, here, let's just take it out of the bag here. And the power cord here. It uh, looks like a nice cord. It says UL is 300 volts, 60 degrees C, 3 times 18 gauge. Or I saw another thing over here in millimeters, 0.824 millimeters. Okay, so let's just take a quick look. The front faceplate here. Uh, I like to say nice buttons and everything. Button, Power button is a mechanical button. And these large knobs here, you can get some good torque on those. That's nice doesn't have a deep press the rotary knob I don't really feel you know the indents you well maybe yeah maybe some indents in there on the encoder uh, yeah we're gonna plug this in and see how it looks but just show you the side there's some vents here uh, cooling system looks like there might be two fans I don't know if they're both installed see some heavy heat sinks in here and we'll take this off because we're gonna get the power cord on there so there's a switch, here's the sense and trigger, there's a COM port and the eye monitor that I was talking about. The in information about the fuse, 1.25 amp fuse for 110, 220 it would be a 500 milliamp and, and it's right here. So here's the uh, levers that you just pull out and adjust. The vents on both sides of it. So the sides look identical. There's the bottom of it. Looks like we have some things mounted here. Circuit board I can see through the holes there. So we do have some holes for uh, air circulation, some venting on the bottom. And you can see the, the feet here are gonna hold it up off the ground enough that you get some airflow. And just to put a measuring device there, Looks like about two centimeters or an inches. Yeah, just you know, three quarters, seven eighths of an inch, not quite an inch. And they don't turn or anything, they're fixed. The rubber on them feels like it's pretty so, uh, soft enough, but solid. Yeah, they're in there. So yeah, that's the that's the whole thing. All okay. right. Um, plugging the power cord in. Let's take a look at the uh, display coming on for the first time together. I got a bunch of lights on here, so hopefully we can see this. Looks like it's up already. Uh, you know what? There is a film on this. I think there's a, yeah, there's this protective. I thought about leaving that on sometimes, you know, but this one. I have to take that knob off to get it off though. There we go. Yeah, that looks much better. That film was not uh, completely transparent. <laughs> not completely clear. The display looks nice. Uh, the current, look at that. Zero point and then three decimal places, amps. And I see a dash underneath the two. Uh, indicating that I can move it like that. So really intuitive. It says auto underneath it. Okay, when I push this, I saw this thing change. Okay, watt. Okay, voltage peak, I guess. Average power, maybe. And watts. 
it says off and constant current. So I see constant current here, that's what we're on, constant voltage, uh, constant wattage, constant resistance. Now let me uh, go back over that. When I go to constant voltage, you see that change to, 50, uh, to voltage, 150 volts, decimal place, and then two spots. That's nice. I'll go down again on this just to see. So there's uh, amps peak, I guess, watts, and volts peak, and average power peak, or average power, I guess. I'm, I'm not positive what that is, but okay. Then we'll go to constant wattage. So we got watts over here, 0 0.2 two decimal places. Again, if I go down, looks like this rotates through the same stuff, this menu here. And this, you know, rotates through the decimal places so you can adjust them. So if, oh, look at that. Wow. Okay, there's 200 watts. So that's, and this is really sweet. I like this. Let's go to constant resistance. There's resistance. Come over here. Drop it down. I want 450. I want 4K, 500, and let's see. I can use numbers here. Oh, okay. I just type it in this way, I guess. Four, five. So one, two, three, four, four spots, I guess. Well, and then the decimal spot, five. Okay, one. One, two, three. Okay, I gotta go start over. There's one, two, three, four, five. So five places. Okay. That is pretty sweet. I like that. Enter. So if I want to change it this way, I can do it that way. Whoops, sorry. One. Move it over here. One. Can I go to decimal places? Yep, I sure can. So five. That is pretty cool. If I do this, again, we change the same menu rotations to this side. So, yeah, we got all these four. I see a setup on the second, the shift setup. Over current protection, over power protection. CR LED. So, constant resistance for LED, I guess. And we got a recall, a lock. And on and off. This just gonna look at that. It's reading what voltage and current I have, which I have none, so it's telling me none. And right over here, it's off and on. I'll tell you the only thing right now is I just wish that uh, it was a bigger indicator that was off and on, but I guess you know that's good enough, right? You can see it. So this must be for local or remote if I'm connected in the back. And then I have short, transient, and a list. Save, battery. Wow, there's battery mode. Programming, pause, trigger, config, system, info. So let's just see what config does. Protect, measure. Let's see. Okay. I sense, V on, reset. Wow. Okay, so we're back to protect. I was just wondering if that does anything. I want to go, okay, so that's just another way to rotate through them. If I enter, oh, max P, A limit, okay, enter, max power, 300 watts. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty intuitive. Even without a manual, I think you can kind of work your way through the thing and figure out how to use it, right? Transient, let's try that, blue, transient. On, off. Okay, there's on. Okay, what if I say on and say enter? Mode continuous. Or pulse. Toggle. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I can say toggle, enter. Level. See, it really very intuitive. So I could come over here and say, oh, I want... Well, I could move this over, drop that down. Say I want 2,000. Now it says constant resistance, but level A is that. See, that's uh, 
So there's two levels. Okay, I'm going to say we're going to start off 2,000 ohms. Level B, 75, we'll just say we're going to go with that. And then, wow, there we go, transient. I switch between two resist. I switch between two resistant values like that. Yeah, so it looks like it's very intuitive. If you've used a electronic load before, it looks like you could probably get yourself around with even without the uh, manual. But we'll probably pull out the manual. But anyway, very nice. Now again, it's good for up to 150 volts, you know, load up to 30 amps or 300 watts you can't get all you can't get 150 volts and 30 amps that'd be pretty cool but this guy would have to be gigantic but you can go 150 volts 2 amps or 30 amps at 10 10 volts or anything in between those things as long as you don't exceed 300 watts all right and the binding post i just want to show you that when you turn them out you got a nice thick metal plate on the knob here and then a metal plate where you squeeze your wire and there's a hole in here you know that you can put the wire or a pin in and then you can squeeze it down this way and you can see that the large diameter gives you a lot of squeezing force but yeah or if you use banana plugs you just go right inside there so yeah it seems really nice all right guys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the it tech uh, it's a 6721 power supply right here and I've got the uh, my test seeds kind of twisted up and plugged in and so I think we're ready to go ahead and uh, test this power supply with this active load okay or electronic load I'll zoom in get tight size I can without cutting things off I guess you mostly need to see the display right there we go. All right, that ought to be good. Keep our eyes on the display, right? All right, so initially we'll just put on constant current, okay? And we will bring the voltage up here, okay, eight volts. And that's good to start with, I guess. And let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, we should see eight volts here. And that looks pretty good so far. Now we need to add some current, right? So, here, let's see, how do we do that? We go, okay, here's a current setting right here. I'm going to move this over here. That's a four. I'll put a four there just for the heck of it. Another four and another four. And then we'll turn it on. Okay. The voltage went to zero because I don't have the current set here high enough. So let's go ahead and set the current up. Okay. I move this arrow over the same way. And it's a little different how the ABCD for ABCD. So move it over to A, 2 amps, 3 amps, 4, 5, and there we go. So it's capable of putting out 5 amps. And look at that, 4448, 4445. So, pretty darn close, huh? Yeah. Now, the voltage here says 7.5 volts. Are we dropping that much across the leads? That seems kind of crazy. Here, let me turn off the load. There's 8 volts. Wow, that is kind of crazy, huh? Well, if that's the case, let's go to current. And let's turn it down a little bit. Now, while I have, I can use the knob here, or I can use the down arrow. But while I have the output turned on, I can just do it real time. Well, I thought I could use the arrow. Nope. See, enter. Nope. Okay, but I can use this. Okay. So, 786. Turn the current back up. Now, if I go over what the setting is here, it yanks it down back to zero if I go back to four it can put it out boy I'm surprised that these leads would drop that much voltage alright guys you know I've been having some trouble with these uh, banana jacks and other things they just feel kind of loose in a lot of joints uh, I think they just the springs seem like they got weak really quick so they're kind of cheap leads uh, they're nice size but they're just kind of cheap now um, what I've done is I've taken these Kiwitz leads I got 
and they have really strong clips and I just put some wires in those little uh, barrels and tighten them down and you can see them on both ends so when I and you can see how when I push these in they, they fit snug I mean these banana barrels are actually pretty tight and they actually fit these tighter than some of my other devices I've been using but uh, just for comparison seven eight six five you know whatever that is up there I mean it's pretty darn close right so yeah it's not the meter it is actually the losses across here so um, see that's 3.4 if I drop it down to one or even down to about a half an amp it's 7.988 it's pretty darn close so put it back up to uh, four I'm gonna increase the current over here too so let's uh, increase this I'm gonna go I'm just gonna bring it up a bit eight amps is the max it says but uh, 180 watts so and then I think I'll bring the voltage up here too whoops let's go over here so you can go up a little faster there we go all right so 1205 drop a little bit see it's the meters are actually right it is actually just losses across the wire and I want to say I think these are 18 gauge so they're not small whoops disconnected the wrong wires didn't I all right so there we go so yeah there's our just constant current uh, constant voltage all right I mean it's regulating voltage so uh, let's go constant wattage we could do wattage and let's move that over here let's go up to one it's off let's turn it back on there's one watt let's go up two watts if we go to 12 watts we should pull one amp right 9 10 11 12 watts and we're almost one amp because it's slightly over 12 volts so uh, we go a little higher okay there's 24 about two amps all right and let's go to constant resistance now you notice every time we change it it turns off the output so which is good right so let's just go ahead and turn it on 700 is 7.5k right now so not very much current right so let's go over here while it's on and let's drop it down we'll drop it down to 500 ohms well that's 100 ohms i guess let's drop it down a little bit more 90 ohms let's go to 12 ohms and we should have one amp right whoops there's 10 12 ohms hey guess what ohms law works one amp 12 ohms <laughs> gives me 12 volts so now it's 1.002 so do the math it's gonna be pretty close to that voltage right there right so yeah I mean pretty easy to to use just playing around not even now CR uh, you know not even reading the manual it's pretty easy to use right now CR LED I'm not sure what that is so let's just see okay CR LED I'm just gonna turn it on see what happens oh maybe I have to enter okay now do I set the voltage not sure how that works I'm just goofing off here probably uh, voltage a diode so it's put one amp out huh yeah sorry guys I guess I'm just goofing off here but um, you know what here let's go ahead and turn it off I turn off the load let's look through the menus okay uh, information okay just has model number version of software or the firmware okay and system okay power on gives us a buzzer what options do we have 
Okay, uh, on or off, I guess. So I'll just, that, we're hearing the buzzer, so it's on, obviously. Okay, let's go back over here, see what else we have. RST, save. So maybe that's restore, power on, restore. So it comes up the way you left it. Maybe that's what that is. Um, okay, power on again. Buzzer, whoops. Okay, just hit enter. Just want to see what other things there might be. Okay, knob or trigger. Source, manual. Yeah, so <laughs> external, bus, hold, manual. Okay, I'll leave it there. Well, yeah, so I'm just goofing off. Don't really know how to use this thing. Range, so that's battery. Okay, here's a short. Sometimes you just want to short the output. So you could just short it. And it looks like it's shorted now. It's brought the voltage down. Uh, current's maxed out. There's off, so the voltage back up. On, so that's just short mode. Turn that off. And hit escape, I guess that's escape key. And uh, here's list. Okay, and yeah, I don't know what that is guys. Um, Sorry, I need to look at the manual first. I wanted to walk through this just to show you intuitively, you know, if it's easy to use or not. Here's a pause, program, uh, config. Let's see what that does. Protect, measure, sense, or that's iSense, I think. V on reset. Okay, max P or A limit. Max power is 300 watts, which is the what's you know maximum capability. But if you want to lower that, and max power or A limit, so you can set uh, A limit on off. So you can set the current limit. You know, if you want to protect your, so if you don't want to accidentally uh, damage something by going over power over current. And escape just takes you out. Then you got your over current protection. That's pretty easy to set up. Or over power protection. I mean, it's programmable. So, yeah, I really need to pull out the manual to get it. But I just wanted to do a quick video on this. Just kind of show you. I'll do another video. I'll look at the manual. And I'll show you some cool stuff. And we'll get the oscilloscope so you can really see what it can do. Okay? But... Yeah, pretty nice load, right? Uh, a lot of capability, up to 150 volts, up to 30 amps. Uh, 300 watt max load, though. And, of course, this is only good for DC voltage, you know. So, just in case you're wondering. And just to let you know about the Kiwitz test aids, uh, I'll put the link below. It comes with uh, multiple colors in the bag. So, yeah, you get five colors. And also, just show you, it does come in a resealable... Uh, Ziploc bag, so that's kind of nice, nice for storage. All right, guys, just want to show you. There's two screws in the back. These two screws, the slides off. There's some feet in the bottom. The right down here, and uh, removing the rubber, I could access the screw, and then the two feet come off up here. Now, oh, and I also took off the handle. Just rotate it up and pull it, and you can pull each end off. So. Um, now I hope I'm ready to slide it out of the case. I wanted to show you so you could see it with me. Okay, I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. Hold on, just all right. And by the way, I use this really cool screwdriver, uh, Work Pro has all the bits in here. It's a ratchet, really like this. I'll put the link down below. Appreciate if you use the links, uh, it's a free way to support the channel. Feels like it's kind of hooked on something. I 
feel like it might be clipped into the top somewhere. Oh, there we go. Wow. All right. Oh, and by the way, let me just show you the inside. We can look at it together. Oh, here's the little clips that slid up underneath here. And there's some clips in the back that uh, the, the back part held on to. So there we go. Man, that looks pretty sweet inside there. Let's see if I can get a better view. Okay, so that is the inside of this thing. Maybe I'll prop up the back so we can look at a little more square. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Now on the board I see little arrows pointing down. I just always think it's kind of neat when down along here at the bottom there's some arrows. If you can see those. just think it's interesting when they use silk screens nicely to help build things. But yeah, these are some pretty nice little heat sinks here with the fans on the back that's really cool it pushes the air uh, you know I, I'm not sure if it was pulling or pushing I'm guessing it's pushing and pulling it through the fins here and pushing it out the back I never really noticed it I didn't really hear a lot of sound maybe it turns on the temperature um, I see what looks like an MOV down here at the bottom down in there if you can see you see that what looks like an MOV down here all right uh, well, let's just take a look. Some of the obvious things, the terminals, look at the big old lugs to the output terminals. That is really nice. And see how it, they're adjustable? So when they put the board in, put the lugs in, then they can screw down those things to match the uh, lugs here with the board. That is a really interesting, kind of a cool way to do that. And look at the transient protection, the big blue devices here. Let's zoom down there. All right, guys, so I zoomed down here so you could see how the lugs are designed. And the uh, there's capacitors along with the uh, what looks like big old MOVs. I'm pretty sure that's what those are. And there's three caps too. And here's the ground, the earth ground. So it's right there filtering off these caps and everything right down to the bolt right down here at the bottom of the board or the bottom of the box right here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, looks like some resistors, probably for some current sensing, and then some film capacitors here. And that looks like a relay. And these look like some trim resistors on these little circuit boards right here. You see these little circuit boards right here? Looks like some trim resistors on those. And look at these uh, resistors. That are That is really cool. Looks like there might be another higher power unit that they installed two more. So down here in the middle of the board, it looks like all the smarts, crystal, a bunch of uh, control chips. So we're just kind of taking a peruse around, see what how this thing's made. But this looks very nice quality. Uh, the power switch. Now here's a linear transformer. So it looks like the linear transformer is providing power for all this logic up here. That's really nice. Uh, ground, there must be a shield inside here that's coming out being, being grounded. So that's really nice. Now there's a combination of uh, through-hole resistors, uh, but mostly surface mount parts. So I think they're using some of the through-hole resistors for large power devices. As well, let's skim over here, as well as the input circuit right here. All these uh, resistors here, big power resistors uh, so this is the eye monitor that goes out to that coax and there's a trim pot right there uh, some aluminum electrolyte capacitors kind of spread around but look at the ferrite beads on the power cable to shield the cable there's two sets of them a couple turns two or three turns in each one and this is the safety ground coming down, going right to the connector that probably goes right to chassis. I see some X caps down in there. Let's see if we can zoom in so you can see that better. Yeah, so maybe that light makes it a little bit better so you can see a little bit better down in there. There's some EMI capacitors down in there. Yeah, there's an MOV right there. You see that large part right there, that big blue one? And then underneath here. Now... Let's see, both heat sinks have these big parts here. Let me see, what are they, transistors? There's a couple more. This is probably for temperature. 
There's a couple more mounted on this heat sink here, if you can see that. See them on this side? Very nice. Now, on the other side of these big, big heat sinks, which is kind of hard to see, it's kind of hard to see, but let me see if I can zoom down on the heat sink here. So you can see on this side of the heat sink, there's two large transistors down here too. And same on, on this guy. Down inside there, there's a couple big transistors. I'm trying to get the light so you can see all the logic down in there. Uh, a lot of nice chips. There's a lot of uh, surface mount chips down in there. Uh, control I see down here, a little microprocessor right down here. So you can see the little microprocessor. And then over in this corner, it looks like there's some power supply circuitry. So you see the tall heat sinks right here? They're, they're really tall. They're as tall as these big heat sinks here, they're like two or three inches tall. But you can see the bridge rectifiers down here that's coming off this transformer. So the transformer over here is bringing power down here. Let's see if I can get this so you can see. Uh, so you can see the heat sinks here. There's a bridge rectifiers down there. So there's some regulation going on. I think this is all linear power supplies. So, uh, but the fan here, as it's pulling air through this heat sink, it's going to pull it across these heat sinks here too. And then up here, up here, this fan is going to pull, uh, you know, air across these resistive devices. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? Those nice shunts are going to be cooled off and, uh, and also the, uh, the big terminals over here are going to be helped kept cool. And the vents put placed in a nice area there. And also the holes along the bottom of the board are going to help air circulate down there. All right, also there's the front of the board there. So you can see a couple of nice processors for all the displays and all the stuff going on there. So yeah, this unit is, and you can see the big lugs down here, maybe another angle at them. They've got some uh, Loctite on them. Yeah, I, I know it's Loctite on some of the other hardware. This thing's been, you know, they've put a lot of thought in this been done nice all right guys thought I'd give you another view of this and we'll just zoom in on all this stuff down here some of these chips I'll kind of tell you what they are okay uh, the crystals Nate Meg crystal this chip over here on the far left that's a OP07 there's a, a number of those in here these are really low offset op amps they're analog devices parts then this chip right here, that is an AD analog device, 8656. It's supposed to be the industry's lowest noise precision amplifier. And this little guy right here, the guy next to the 8 meg crystal, that is a BCPZ7682. It's a 16-bit, four-channel multiplexer. And then right over here, this is interesting. It's an ADR421. It's an ultra precision voltage reference. And then this chip here, the larger chip with a lot of pins on it, that is a 16 pit. That's a, well, it's a 16 pit digital analog converter. It's a DAC 7631E. And then the microprocessor right here, this guy right here, uh, that's a STM32F. It's a 32 bit micro. Then there's a transformer over here with the linear power supply circuit here with the real tall heat sinks. Really nicely placed in front of the fan here. And then a bunch more op amps. But just a lot of devices in here. You can see down, right down in there you can see how dense it is with all the chips and parts. Uh, pretty nice. And zooming back out, there's another view of these circuit boards with what looks like precision resistors. And coming back down to the resistors down here. You know, with the resistors, these are op amps down here. Any 5532s, I believe what they are. Hey, before I go any further, I want to thank those that have supported the channel by buying a t-shirt. That's really cool. I uh, thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, my wife came up with the designs. 
as well as the hat design. So, <laughs> so if you like hats, um, yeah, I got some hats. I, I, don't, I think there's some mugs, some other things that she designed. So, yeah, it's just a start. I uh, just thought we'd do something because some people have uh, asked about it. But, well, hey, thanks, guys, and let's get on with the review. Hey, guys, so what do you think? The iTech 8512A sitting right here on my bench. I'm going to have to rearrange my bench again. Uh, now that I've got this iTech power supply, which is low noise, it looks like it's low noise. I'm going to do another test uh, after I read the manual on this electronic load and really run that through the paces, that power supply. And I think I'll compare it to uh, the Xantrex and the Kiwits and even these HP linears, these big behemoths behind me so and I think I'm gonna get rid of these guys I gotta simplify the bench I've got some more equipment I got to put over here so uh, yeah I got to figure out my lab and uh, uh, make room for stuff but uh, two thumbs up for iTech for sending me this electronic load it's gonna be a lot of fun now this electronic load you can see from the inside it's not uh, inexpensively built it's a nice um, electronic clothes, it's a nice piece of equipment. Like the box says, high quality instrument. You know, I think the price is probably along the lines of the Siglitz, the Rigels, along those lines. When you look at the 150, 200 watt units, they're all around 500 bucks. This is a 300 watt. Now the 300 watt, the price jumps up a lot. It almost like doubles just because of the power. Uh, so yeah, this seems I think close to 800, 900 bucks. Um, but when I looked on Amazon today, I saw there's a discount for a hundred dollars. So I'm gonna put the link down for this one as well. When you go to the to the link, you'll see the option for the lower cost unit as well. But really nice. I have this Kunkin. That is an inexpensive unit. That's closer to the I think the two hundred dollar price range. About half the price is the uh, the lower cost unit of the iTech but yeah I've had some issues with that that's why I haven't done a lot of reviews with it lately so I am going to do a review on that kind of talk about what I've seen with it and we will kind of run through that I have looked at the manual just briefly on this iTech and I want to do some of this battery testing where you can discharge your batteries and you can uh, discharge them and stop it looks like on either voltage level uh, capacity level or just a timer so uh, that looks pretty cool then it also has that LED uh, test which is pretty interesting I haven't seen that before so uh, I'll, I'll look at see how you do that test as well and I'll demonstrate those things in the future but for now I hope you liked it and uh, two big thumbs up for my patrons as well as I tech uh, appreciate them sending that to me and thanks for watching the video let me know what you like to see the electronic load do as part of uh, the next review on this uh, more in depth where I'll actually review the power supply in depth as well and compare it to these other power supplies I could say so alright guys hey thanks for watching and we'll see you next time